scientists say possess swarm intelligence, a kind of intelligence where many individuals work together as one to do amazing things. Understanding how these organisms do it could fundamentally change the way we think about the evolution of intelligence. We used to think intelligence was really associated with having one large brain. Whereas now, when we look at swarming ants or bees or schooling fish, we realize you can build intelligence in other ways. A single fish isn't too bright, but by abiding by simple rules, like swim close but not too close, stay lined up, and avoid things you don't like, the school can outsmart even the most cunning predators. And some scientists now think our brains might actually work the same way. Each neuron in your brain isn't smart, yet collectively, you're very intelligent. How is that possible? Are there parallels between these systems and how the brain operates? Now one scientist thinks there are, and he has evidence to prove it. Land ho! Cornell biologist Tom Seeley is taking me to the secluded Appledore Island off the coast of Maine. This is Appledore Island. Without this island, we couldn't have done this analysis. Wow. Where he thinks he's discovered an alien brain to rival our own. No, it's not from another planet. It's bees. Um, Tom, where's my bee suit? <laughs> well, you won't need a bee suit here, David. What are you doing? Dude, you're sticking your finger in there. Right, you too can also put your finger in there and can No, feel... I can't. There you go. Oh, my. Oh, my yeah. There you go. Just... Ah! Sorry. Apparently, these bees aren't stinging me because they're focused on finding a new place to live. House hunting bees are Seeley's specialty. And after 37 years of study, he's convinced that swarms like this not only make smart decisions about where to live, the way they make those decisions bears uncanny resemblance to the way decisions get made in our own brains. Tom Seeley is finding that there are deep parallels with how the brain makes a decision with how the bee colony itself can make decisions. This is extremely important because it's telling us something fundamental about how you can build intelligence. So let me get this straight. You're saying that these bees make a decision. Dude, they're bugs. That's right, that's right. Collectively, they can achieve high intelligence. It's a lot like how your brain works. My brain? How could that be? To understand Seeley's far out claim, we have to look at swarming bees like this. These 12,000 bees have outgrown their old home and need to find a new one to build their hive and raise their young. Normally, a swarm like this would pick a roomy tree hole, but here on Appledore Island, there aren't any trees. So Seeley can do controlled experiments with wooden nest boxes to figure out exactly how the swarms make this decision. To start, Seeley places two boxes out on the island, about a quarter of a mile away from the swarm in different directions. The first, labeled yellow, is a dream home for the bees, roomy with a small entrance to prevent predators from getting in. There we go. The second, blue, is a fixer-upper. It has less space inside and a big entrance. Take out this little entrance, put in a big entrance. Okay, all set. A so-so home site. Back at the swarm, a few scout bees take off in search of a new home. As soon as one discovers the yellow box, Seeley's team nabs it and gently dots it with the corresponding paint color. Same goes for blue. What happens next, I have to say, is pretty crazy. Each bee that finds something comes back and announces her discovery by performing these waggle dances. Wait, wait, waggle dances? Yes. As it turns out, the waggle dance is the way bees communicate with each other. And its discovery back in 1946 was so astonishing that it won a Nobel Prize. See our yellow painted bee here? 
See how every time she wiggles, her head is facing the same direction? She's actually pointing her hive mates in the direction to fly to find the yellow box. Similarly, our blue bee is doing the same thing, but in the opposite direction, pointing the way to find the blue box. Those bees tagging behind her watch carefully so they can follow directions. They take off, check out the real estate for themselves, get marked, and when they return, more dances, more recruits. But the blue bees are at it too. Now we're getting more and more painted bees back at the swarm. But that's not all. Notice how our yellow bee is doing the dance three times, while our blue bee is doing it only twice. Again, that's three times for yellow, but only twice for blue. This last piece of waggle speak tells us how enthusiastic they are about their sights. Looks like yellow is picking up more recruits. And the yellow box is the better home. Will yellow win? Wow. So how is the decision made then? It's a lot like an election. The bees try to recruit additional supporters to be affiliated with their site. And scientists thought that when enough bees waggled for a particular site, that's how the swarm would decide where to move. But then Seely uncovered a new part of the process. See this yellow bee here? She keeps ramming the blue bee and making that weird beep sound. It's a signal that means stop dancing. And if she keeps it up, the blue bee will eventually stop dancing for the blue site. The bee version of mudslinging negative campaigning. What Seeley discovered is that bees like this will go around using this stop signal in addition to waggle dancing, thereby campaigning for their own site and curbing the competition. Amazingly, this process is what neuroscientists believe mirrors how decisions get made in our own brains. We think there is very clear evidence for the human brain, that individual neurons firing in one group at the same time prevent firing in the other group. Here's how it works. Let's say I'm trying to decide whether to eat cake or broccoli. Even though I am not conscious of it, there are a bunch of neurons in my brain that are firing in favor of cake and another set firing for broccoli. But that's not the only signal they're sending. The pro-cake neurons are also sending chemical signals to inhibit the broccoli neurons to stop them from firing, and vice versa. This combination of positive and negative signaling is what neuroscientists call cross-inhibition, and they think it's critical to the decision-making process. We don't have all day. We have to decide. We have to move on. Cross-inhibition is critical to the process of making effective, rapid choices. So both bees and brain cells seem to use the same strategy of positive and negative signaling to reach a decision. Tom Seeley's studies of bees suggests evolution is finding the same solution to problem. I find that mind-blowing. Once the decision is made, all the bees will go to one new home. The trigger is the number of bees visiting a candidate site. As soon as it hits around 100, those bees report back to the swarm, and it's go time. So something is happening. They're, they're getting really agitated. Yes, they're about to Oh my gosh, it. are you seeing them peel off like that? Yeah, this whole swarm cluster is going to dissolve. These bees have finished making their decision. They finished making their preparations to fly to the new home, and now they're I'm starting sorry, to I'm sorry, I can't it. hear you. Okay. These guys are getting so loud. So who is the winner? Did the bees pick the best new home? It's getting deafening. All at once. This is unreal. This is unreal. This is real. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like discovering a, a manuscript by Mozart, something like that. Even though the decision making in a swarm of bees has evolved completely independently from the human brain, um, they've converged on the same basic design, which tells us that this is probably because this is the optimal way to do it.